this AI model is so powerful that artists are calling it the new Photoshop. It's an image generator so detailed that it can capture pores, fibers, subtle lightning, and impossible textures. Today, we're diving into Flux 2.0, pretty much the most advanced open weight image generator ever released. And oh boy, we're gonna put a lot of pressure on it. All right, so let's dive right in. Let's imagine a very detailed prompt, such as this one right here. Now, let's check it out. Let's zoom in on this. Wow. So these models usually have problems with water and reflections. And I figured that the best way to use reflections is by having a jar in the main frame. Look at the colors, guys. Wow, this looks absolutely stunning. And this is one of the four images that we generated. This is the second one. The jar looks perfect. All of the small details look absolutely stunning. The thing that I don't like is this feather here. I feel like it's a bit exaggerated. Another thing that would test its colors is a beetle because beetles have this very interesting coloring under the sunlight and they look something like this. They absolutely nailed it. Let's try its real life understanding of shapes and ratios. We are going to use this prompt. Let's see, this is the first result. Wow. Nana Banana, you might want to step aside for a bit. Wow, this is stunning. The level of detail on the ice cubes baffles me. Second one, look at the glass and the reflections from the glass. This is the third one. This also nails the reflections. And the fourth one. Let's see how does it fare with very, very small details. We are going to use this prompt. I don't know why, but I feel like watchmaking is a pretty interesting domain that would put a magnifying glass under this test. Wow. I'm going to let you guys to just absorb the details yourselves it's it's incomprehensible I, I i don't know how this is possible i am speechless the steam from the tea as well really nothing i can complain about here this is the second one third one and fourth one absolutely stunning a cool thing about flux 2 is the fact that you can prompt in json now yeah i know every image model allows you to prompt in json but in our case the developers are telling us that flux 2 was optimized for json prompts so let's put that to the test shall we this is the prompt that we're using and this is the result. I mean, I think at this level, the human eye cannot understand the differences. But yeah, it, it definitely looks perfect. Another cool thing is Flux 2.0's ability to create hex colors. If you didn't know, hex is the six digit code that tells you the exact nuance of a color. Apparently, Flux 2.0 can do that. I find that pretty hard to believe because I know how hard it is. And I know that these models are usually just generating standard colors, but this one is going all in for hex colors. So we're going to use this very simple prompt to generate a picture of a man waiting for a train. And this man is wearing a blue suit. I told it to focus on the texture of its suit and face because this way we can zoom in and see, wow, the actual quality of this suit is impressive. Now let's try the same prompt, but with a very small addition of the color of the suit is this one. Then let's try this one. Now you can see that all of the generation have the exact same color. Now let's try a shade of yellow. We have the same exact hex color. Next up, I want to show you how important prompting is. We're going to do that by generating 10 images from one single prompt. And I'm going to show you a very, very clear difference between the outputs of a simple prompt and a complex JSON prompt. As the first prompt, we have a picture of a dog sitting outside. This is very vague, very general, very broad. And as you can see here, indeed, we do have a dog that's sitting outside. But what kind of outside and what kind of dog? What are the details? As you can see right here, we have multiple breeds of dogs. All of them are looking into the camera. All of them beautiful dogs, but they are vastly different. So what do you do if you want to create something very specific? That's right, you go with a JSON prompt. Now a JSON prompt is basically a structured machine readable format that's using the JSON syntax in order to give specific instructions to an AI model. So instead of a simple sentence, it uses key value pairs in order to define precise details such as tags tone, constraints, the dog breed, how does the outside look like, what is the dog doing, and all of these are leading to a much more accurate, consistent, and controllable output. This is the prompt, let's create 10 images. Now, if we look at the outputs, they're gonna be 99% similar. Look at this. The JSON prompt will always include details. For example, breed, golden retriever, age, three years old. Its fur should be medium long and slightly wavy. Primary color, golden. Texture, soft, fluffy, well-groomed. Position, sitting, posture, up right, head tilt, slightly tilted to the right. Now you can see the results are 90% similar to each other. And this is what you should be using if you have a detail oriented project. Now, JSON prompts are pretty complex. And if you want to change something, I would not advise you to only change one of these things. For example, instead of a golden retriever, you want a pug. So instead of just replacing golden retriever with pug and get unsatisfactory results, I mean, it still looks good, but it doesn't really look like a pug. You can go to any 
tool such as ChatGPT and tell it to change the entire prompt to include a black pug instead of a golden retriever. It has the same exact pose, same exact feel to it every single time. Another reason why JSON prompts are superior at is that you get all of the small details right here in the prompt. And if you wanna change any details such as the age, this one is three years old, let's say 19 years old, we will get a much older 19 year old pug with the traits of an old dog. And that's how you can play with these details. Let's talk about image references. Let's say you really, really like this type of image. I don't know, you saw it somewhere and you really wanna replicate something like that. You already know that simply typing image of a cat will not help it. Not even if you try to say image of a cat wearing a purple crown. What you need to do is to use their reference feature. With the reference feature, you can upload the image that you like to achieve and you can use the same exact simple natural language prompt. This way, Flux 2.0 will understand exactly the type of image that you want to generate. And the results will be much, much closer than what you want. I like the color scheme of the movie, The Grand Budapest Hotel, and I'm gonna use that as a reference. A scientist having an intense conversation with a mechanical engineer. And as you can see, all of the pictures will follow my exact reference. Nano Banana Pro just came out, so let's try to compare them. In Nano Banana Pro, I got this result from the prompt, generate an image of a pumpkin farmer. Let's use the same exact prompt for Flux 2.0. Nano Banana Pro, Flux 2.0. Leave a comment below telling me which one do you think is best. I think that Flux is doing a bit better than Nano Banana Pro. Let's try a different thing. You know it, I know it. Image generation models always had problems with drawing hands. They either got like seven fingers or three hands. Let's give it this prompt just so we can see how well does it behave. Now let's see. Things are looking pretty good. I'm not gonna complain. Yeah, that's the handshake looks pretty decent. This guy is tying his shoe. Five fingers, five fingers, five fingers. Yeah, it seems like they improved a lot on the on the finger side. Not one single is... Oh, there you go. I only see three fingers here. So yeah, what is this? Who does that? <laughs> also here there's a little something. So if the hand score was like a four out of 10, I, I would say that now is like an eight or nine out of 10. It looks, it looks pretty good. Let's see how well it knows to create other images from multiple input references. As a first example, let's use the picture of this skateboard, this futuristic cyberpunk lady, and this dystopian city. Voila, looks absolutely stunning. It also changed the angles, looks good. In comparison, this is what Nano Banana gave us, which I think it's inferior to Flux 2.0. Honestly, it's just so good to have Black Forest Labs back. The community needs it. Yes, I know, Nano Banana Pro brings in fresh energy. And while I know that a lot of people will try to frame it like Nano Banana 2 will destroy Flux or Flux will destroy Nano Banana, the truth is that's not really a fair comparison. Both of these models are very close in quality and in the end it all comes down to subjective preference. Indeed, there are some tests in which Flux 2 comes out on top and also there are some tests in which Nano Banana Pro comes out on top. But overall, this is a huge win for us, for the entire community, the entire world of image generation overall. Because when we have more competition, we're gonna have more innovation and more breakthroughs. And that means better tools for all of us. So yeah, welcome back Black Forest Labs, we dearly missed you. And speaking of missing, make sure you don't miss out on clicking the first link in the description and check out There's an AI for That, the biggest website for AI tools in the world. We have more than 42,000 listed tools. And while you're at it, make sure to subscribe to our newsletter, which is also the biggest AI newsletter in the world with more than 2.2 million readers every single day. Thank you for watching guys. And as always, have an amazing day. Until next time.